Okay, we're in section 35 of the notes now. All right, and the intent here is to get you guys to look at the contents, study the examples, and then get busy with the exercises. My name is Ron Bannon. This is a draft version of Webster Wells's Advanced Course in Algebra, which dates back to 1904. This document was prepared for the prison mathematic project participants only. In the future, it will be published. And um, again, if you need to reach out to me for any reason, my name again is Bannon, and my email address is also Bannon. That's B as in boy, A, which is the at symbol, N-N-O-N dot U-S. Yes, I'm in the United States. So this is a tough section. What I mean by that, it's longer. And certainly, our encouragement is to read through that. Now, certainly some are going to say, I don't have the document. Could you slow down the scrolling? Not really. The document will be published. I also want to point out, you know, you could get this document if you go back to my original lectures, going back to zero, zero. I told you how to get the book, all right, if you want to get Webster Wells' book, all right? Free of charge, by the way. So I'm just going to scroll through that. I'm going to scroll through it, scroll through it, scroll through it. Whoops, we'll get to the questions now. So the point about this over here, again, the, our, our, our tolerance for answers has become, um, you know, um, quite lax. So uh, what I want to claim over here is when I'm reading the problem over here, a standard algebra student, again, whether they know what a rod is or not, doesn't matter to me. But a standard algebra student reading this problem over here, you know what they looked, they said a length of, of field is 10 rods. Uh, I'll put this down. Let's make a rectangular field now. 10. And it's um, the, the width of is 8. It says how many rods must be added to the breadth? Well, I'll put this over here. This is what typically an algebra student would do. And they want to know the area, and the area is going to be 60, right? Let me just remind you for rectangle, this is called length. Let's just say minus right analogy width. That times width is going to be area. So let's write this down 10 times 8 plus x. And I'm not really thinking about the words anymore. And what do they want? They want that to be 60. So if you were to do this, you'd get 80 plus 10x equals 60. I would take 80 from both sides, I get minus 20 is 10x, and x equals minus 2. Now, nowadays, on an algebra exam, when the student puts this down, you give them full credit. Certainly, in Wells' day, things were a little bit different. They wanted people to interpret the answer. And this doesn't make sense to me. I'll tell you why it doesn't make sense to me. They're not, they're not adding to the, to the breadth of this thing. They're taking from it. So the problem really should be rewritten, uh, and it should speak to what they're really doing. So let me kind of read that off to you. You know, the way I would do it, you know, we're adding minus two rods. The same thing as subtracting two rods. Hence, two rods must be subtracted from the breadth in order for the area to be 60 square rods. We should modify the problem to read the length of the field is 10 rods, the breadth is 8 rods. How many rods must be subtracted from the breadth so the area may be 60 square rods? This will grammatically make more sense to a reader, and it does. So, um, again, you might think that's a fine point, but we really should be thinking about how to make it grammatically more uh, sensible to the reader. All right? So let's take a look at this one over here. And it says A is 35 years of age, B and B is 20 years of age. It's required to determine the epoch at which A's age is twice as great as B's. All right? So what I would write down is the epoch is the number of years. All right? So I'm going to write this to A. Now, I'm going to say, I, I don't know what it is, but, but A is 35 years old, and I'm either going to be giving or taking from A. I don't know what it is yet, though. And B is 20, and I'm either going to be given or taken from it. So I'm going to say X is the epoch. That's what the epoch is, the number of years. All right. So then the question comes is, what do they want you to do? Well, they want, you to want, they want A's age to be twice B's age at this point in time. And that's an epic we're either giving or taking. I don't know the answer yet, though. So what do you get over here? 35 plus x. 2 times 20 is 40. That's 2x. I would take away x from both sides. Give me a second. And I would subtract 40 from both sides. What do you get? Minus 5 equals x. So really what the answer is, it's five years ago. Five years ago, A was twice uh, B's age, and that's what's written over here. And this problem certainly makes sense, all right? I want to point out to you, if you look at the bottom of the page, it's something I normally do. 
I'll reference that word in the problem that might have been confusing to some students. So I just kind of copied it down. And rods were once used. Like you're reading a, you could be reading something, you'll see the word rod used. All right. And, and this is throughout history. You're going to read words that have fallen out of favor, but they're still being used. All right. So what I mean still being used, historically they're still being used. You, you would never ask someone what their measure in, in rods were. Anymore. Okay. So let's go to the next one. And the next one, you know, I'm reading it. And my understanding of reading these problems over here is do I understand what they want? So they say 11 times the number of persons in a certain house increased by 18 be divided by 4. The result equals twice the number increased by 3. Find the number. So I'm going to say the number to me represents the number of people in this certain house. So let me write this down for you. And what does it say? 11, I'm just reading left to right, times the number, it's the number of people in the house, Increased by 18. They go on to say is divided by 4. They say the result equals twice the number increased by 3. All right. Now, I think I could figure out x, and I want to go through that with you. So when I go through that with you, you might say, what are you going to do? I can multiply both sides by 4. And what do you get? 11x plus 18. 4 times 2x is 8x. 4 times 3 is 12. And again, I'm not thinking about the problem anymore. I'm just thinking about solving a very simple linear equation. Subtract 8x from both sides. And subtract 18 from both sides. And again, I'm no longer thinking about the question. What do you get over here? Uh, let's see, 11x minus 8x is going to be 3x, right? 18's cancel off. 8x minus 8x, nothing. And 12 minus 18 is minus 6. So what do you get? X equals minus 2. All right? Whoop, sorry about that. I hope you realize you can't have minus 2 people in the house. All right? So I'm going to say the negative, re negative result shows the, pop the problem is impossible. All right? Pretty simple. All right, let's take a look at this one over here. And it says a man has two kinds of money. He has dimes and cents. All right? Now, nowadays, I call cents pennies, but you, 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 certainly they are cents. All right, the total number of coins is 23. So I'm going to say, I'm just kind of talking through it. I know it's written down for you, but I'm going to say D is the number of dimes. All right, I'll point out what this is over here. And, you know, I'm looking at it, and, you know, someone says, well, how many cents would there be? There would be 23 minus D cents then. Let me point out what I mean by that. The number of dimes plus the number of cents, I'll just call it C, would equal 23. There's 23 coins. So the number of cents would equal 23 minus D. That's relatively simple, all right? So, I, I, again, you just keep reading it. The total of coins is 23, and their value is 37. So I'll write this down. And, and certainly, I, I know they talk about value now. And what's the value going to be? Well, each dime is worth 10 cents, and each penny is worth 1 cent. How many pennies do you have? 23 minus D. And how much money do I have? 37 cents. This is 10D plus 23 minus D equals 37. I'm going to try to simplify that. That's 11D. I guess I subtract 23 from both sides and that would give you... Uh, did I do that right? Oh, I'm sorry. It's not 11. It's 9. Let me get my eraser out. I'm really daydreaming here. That's going to be 9D. Again, 10D minus 1D is 9D. Take away 23 from both sides, and you're going to get 14. And what do you get for the number of dimes? Which seems outrageous. You get 14 ninths, which is uh, 9 goes into 14 once with a remainder of 5. So I hope you realize you can't have that. You could not have 1 and 5 ninths of a dime. All right, You just couldn't have it. All right, So either 1 dime, 2 dimes, 3 dimes, so forth and so on. So I'm going to say, it's, it's, again, it's impossible. There's no valid solution to the problem. What am I writing down? Can't have a fractional number of coins. The problem has no valid solution. All right? So let's take a look at number five. And number five is, you know, the denominator of a fraction exceeds the numerator by six. So I, I'm going to, you know, write down what a fraction looks like to me, where this would be the denominator, this would be the numerator. But what did they say? You know, they, they said something. They said the denominator of the fraction exceeds the numerator by six, 
So I'm going to write down, it. really, the fraction is n. That's the top. And the bottom, it says, you know, the denominator of the fraction exceeds the numerator by 6. Okay? And if 2 be added to the numerator, well, let me do that, see what happens. The value of the fraction will be 1 -third. So I kind of read it. I understand what I've read. And I want to see if I can solve the equation. I'm going to multiply both sides by the LCD, or what some students might call cross-multiplication. It's really the same thing. You get 3n plus 6 equals n plus 6. I would subtract 6 from both sides and subtract n. And what do you get? 0. And let's see. What do you get? 2n, right? So what's n? n would equal 0. All right, so it's crazy. Let's take a look at this. So if I were to write that down, right, what would my original fraction be? All right, so if the denominator fraction exceeds the numerator by 6, that's my original fraction. Now, if I add 2 to the numerator, what would I get? 2 6, which is 1 third. All right, so the original fraction, it appears to be this guy over here, which is just 0. Now, by the way, I realize a lot of people look at that and say, you know, oh, fraction, that's not a fraction. You know what? It's not a fraction. Fractions are, you know, in, in the English language, are going to be a ratio of integers. And someone goes, well, what's the ratio over here? Well, this is a ratio of integers over there, 0 over 6. So I could understand a student answering that question that way. Right? But in common convention, we would not treat 0 as a fraction. So we would say the problem really has no solution. However, nowadays, we're much more tolerant. We would accept 0 as a solution over here. Again, this stuff is written down for you, all right? Now, here's a problem that I want to be honest with you is going to be really difficult to read through, all right? So my claim over here is without me talking through it, my goal here is to get you guys to read it. In other words, read this problem. Look at my answer, and it's long. Read it and try to make sense out of it. This is my version of the problem, all right? When I say my version of what I would write up, if you want to scroll back on the notes, though, to Webster Wells's problem, this is the problem of couriers, all right? I also recommend you pay careful attention to what he's saying. Now, this is an original image from Wells's textbook, all right? I got to be honest with you. Nowadays, they have pictures that are far better, but the bottom line is you don't need good pictures you need good reading skills to do the problem. So I'm going to say this is the problem of couriers. Look through it. Read it. Try to understand what Wells is talking about. To me, Wells's work is good. It's a lot of work. He puts it down. I also put work down over there. Again, let me go back over that. When you look at my answer, whoops, sorry, over here, to that particular problem, I do put the work down for you. All right? And hopefully you're willing to read through it. Hopefully you're, you're willing to get these things over here and you're, and you're able to think through A, B, C, D, E, and F. Does it require time and effort? Yeah. So this problem is going to require your time and your effort to understand. There's no amount of talking that's going to help you there. You need to think. Okay, let's keep going forward. So forward part. This is the tough part now. After you mastered all that stuff, what do you do? You're going to be doing the exercises. Exercises look similar to what's been given to you in the problem of, of the examples and in the uh, in Wells' text, but go go through them. And certainly, number one, the, you know the, the the field. Number two is an age problem. Number three looks like a money problem. Oops, sorry about that. Number four has two pipes. Um, it looks like it's a work problem to me. All right. Again, read through it. Again, I put some work down for you. I'm not going to say it's all the work, but enough work to uh, say if you can't get it, you could look at my work that might give you a little hint or two. Uh, five, uh, distance equals rate times time problem. Looks pretty reasonable. Uh, seven looks like a money problem. Just not reading it, but it looks like a money problem. Uh, seven looks like a, uh, just a simple numerical problem where they got apples and pears uh, trees, and, and there are no orchard There's 23 altogether trees, right? So it's just a simple numerical problem. Uh, number eight, Again, looks like a coin problem to me. Number nine looks like a, a, a fraction, a numerator, a denominator. Very similar to what we've done so far. 
Uh, 10 is an age problem, very similar to what we've done so far. You might find these more difficult, but very similar. Number 11, you know, a little more difficult, but the bottom, because it's abstract, uh, you know, they're not, they're telling you fractions A over B and C every day. But think about it. Give it, give it a try. You know, really give it a try. All right? 12 is a core year problem. Give it a try. I do write up answers for you. Uh, 13, again, I hope you remember in the prior section we talked about four wheel, which we would not use that word nowadays. We would say the front wheel or the front tire, we might say. And the hind wheel, we wouldn't use that. That's the rear wheel. All right? So, again, something to think about. And um, after you do that, if you're interested, you can think about, you know, doing the SAGE business if you're interested. What SAGE is a computer algebra system or a CAS, C-A-S, for computer algebra system. You go to this website, free of charge. You can either download the application or use the interactive web-based thing. And my recommendation is, you know, just try to code, all right? And again, if you want to, you can go back to the original uh, videos that we presented to you. And I believe this was, dub, uh, I'm sorry, zero. Whoops, I did it again. I wonder what happened right there. Let's get a race around. I've never seen that before. So I'm going to say you can go back zero, zero, WW Sage. You can find that one. All right. And that's a video about me using Sage interactively. All right. My, my uh, email is Bannon, that's B-A-N-N, -N, that, that's an S symbol, not an A, N-N-O-N -N dot U-S. And let me remind you, I'm really appreciative for students who get back to me, saying there's an error, and, then, and, and for me to correct it. And I'll certainly give you credit if you come up with a legitimate error in the, in the problem set. All right? So uh, thanks for paying attention. All right? You do need to move forward, though. What's forward? Make sure you study section 35. Make sure you can do those examples that are provided for you. And get busy with the exercises. It's a lot of work, though. Thanks for paying attention.